Okay, so I'm going to work on this side first. I'm just going to drop the tensioner. Um, we'll just go nice and slow. And we might get a bit of spring back as we do this, but it's not going to be too bad. It's our first tensioner. Get that guide out of the way. Put that Whoops, we dropped that one. That'd be a nightmare if it was in the car. Take it off the top here as well. And we can get this chain free. I'm not sure if the chains are same or different, so I'm going to definitely keep them in the right spots. Take the second half of the chain guide off. And look, there's no obvious sort of damage to these. They're definitely um, used, but they're not far away yet. Might take this little tensioner out of my way. When I say a little tensioner, I had a fair chunk of tension on it. So that's just the tensioner there and it just hooks around onto that one there. And I lost the bolt inside the sump when I ripped it off. Let's get it out. So it's obviously one with a nice sort of shank that fits into here. So look, at this stage, I don't know that I need to even needed to get that off so I might just leave that at that point and see how we go with the rest of this timing chain setup. Now with these tensioners you can actually kind of compress them back and lock them back in. Um, I gave it a go off camera but it's just a little bit hard to squeeze it to get it far enough back so um, it's just going to be a problem for later just to recompress it and put it back in. So we'll get the nut off and the bolt. I do need just to move those locking teeth up out of the way just a little bit, just so I've got a little bit more room to move it. And that's what I was talking about before. You, if you can just lift those up, um, you can then compress it back down. Um, but I just couldn't compress it down far enough to lock it in, but we'll do that before we put it back together. Take the chain guide bolts off this side. Two at the top. Just wiggle that guide out of the way there. See if we can just slip it off. Once we get a bit of slack on it, it's fairly easy just to wiggle it out of the way. And for now, I'm just going to let it all sit wrapped up there and being a pain. Again, these have pretty minimal wear on them, so I'm happy to um, be reusing them. Now, just coming around to the front cylinder here, I do notice that the alternator bolt actually goes through the housing on the head um, and on the block, so this alternator will have to come out. <coughs> Now in order to access the um, bolts for the cylinder heads, the cams have got to come out. So let's take this little housing out here that just is for the oil pressure for the variable valve solenoid. Now I'm just going to start from the outside and just loosen all of these a little bit first. Now, although these have some writing on them, I haven't been able to make out um, actually what the writing is. So it's just not clear the numbering system. So I definitely want to keep these all in order. So we'll pop them off and lay them out in order somewhere. Also at this point, it's really good just to check how these journals um, are looking. 
and the first few that I've seen are looking pretty good. Let's just carefully pry this one up. Okay, now what I'm going to do with mine, just to keep them all in order, uh, is just, just run some cable ties on them together like that. Um, that way, look, the bolts, I'm not too stressed about the bolts, but I definitely want the caps kept in order. Again, on the exhaust side. Um, now it's not foolproof, but look, when I lay it out somewhere carefully, at least they'll kind of stay together. Now we can lift these cams up and out, and again, you're gonna need some way to sort of mark these, just so you remember which ones are which. You probably have some sort of casting numbers or anything, but look, I don't wanna mix them up, so make sure you lay them out in a way that you're not going to forget. Now the bucket shims here are also, um, they're not hydraulically adjusted, so, you need to keep these in the exact order that you took them out in, otherwise you're just having to re-measure. Um, what I'm gonna do is just literally leave them in because at the moment I'm just gonna pull the heads off and not tip them upside down. So I'll leave them there for now. Okay, so I just wanna crack these head bolts off. We're gonna start from the outside and just wind my way in. Um, that one I just did there was really quite loose. Again, that one felt pretty loose as well. Yeah, mediocre. That one there was definitely loose. Up, that's the first really tight one I've felt. Again, super loose. Yeah, pretty loose. Okay, we'll now zip these all out. Pull them out. I am looking for any sort of damaged threads or anything on here, but you may not see it. They did all come out. There's nothing that was falling out. Now I've just got a um, plug up here we just need to pull off. Everything is now off this head, so we should just be able to um, carefully pull it off. We might still have some coolant that comes out, so I'm just gonna carefully just pry it up here. Look, it's going to come away quite easily by the looks of things. Just going to grab it and lift it off. Okay, now we'll zip around and do the exact same thing on the other side. Again, just double check there's nothing still attached. Um, and I'm just giving it a little bit of a lever off just to make sure. And sneaky little bolt down in here. Looks like a 12 mil. Didn't have one of those on the other side. It feels like it's now free to lift off. 